Was there never a point when you wondered about the, the safety of the sub at that depth? No. Two or three years ago, I had a phone call with uh, Stockton, and he explained to me that he was doing a, a lot of tests. He showed me some the, the ways they were building the stuff. I said, okay, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> no problem to dive in the sub. Did a big noise happen, pushing people who needed help? Or was it a quiet signal detected by the sonar? The sad event on June 18th, 2023, is something that will be remembered and written about in history for a long time. At the same time, investigators who are working non-stop to understand what exactly occurred to the Titan submersible have now discovered some important details given by the U.S. Navy. What precisely did the U.S. Navy hear during the last moments of the Titan submarine? Until now, the authorities have only made uncertain guesses and speculations in their investigation. However, with this fresh data, we might be nearer to uncovering the secret behind this unfortunate event. From the strange noises picked up inside the submersible to finally retrieving the wreckage, the U.S. Navy promptly identified the implosion of the Titan submersible. It's no wonder considering the Navy's broad reach and influence beyond the water's surface, engaging in various tasks like military operations, humanitarian aid, and even exploring the oceans. Crucial for national defense, the Navy uses advanced technologies to react quickly to threats, often foreseeing potential issues through their comprehensive ocean monitoring. The quest for the lost Titan submersible took a significant turn when a highly classified Navy acoustic detection system detected a puzzling implosion several hours after the submersible went missing. At first, they couldn't verify if the sound was from the Titan submersible, but this discovery helped narrow down the search area, leading to the eventual recovery of the wreckage. The first senior naval officer informed about the sound mentioned that the acoustic data indicated an implosion near the last known location of the Titans. The Enigmatic Sounds You might be curious about the exact character of the detected sounds. Did they hear a booming explosion, a simple pop, or maybe a faint sound wave picked up by the sonar? Now before we delve into the details, it's essential to grasp the initial information that was made public. The investigative authorities initially revealed that what the U.S. Navy had recorded with their highly confidential listening devices was an acoustic anomaly. The realm of underwater exploration is brimming with unknowns and unexpected occurrences, and one of the most captivating aspects is the notion of acoustic anomalies. Essentially, an acoustic anomaly refers to any sound that doesn't match the expected sound profile of the underwater environment. It's unexpected, unusual, and often shrouded in mystery. These sounds can vary from a subtle hum to a loud bang, and they can be caused by various factors including natural phenomena, human activity, the presence of underwater creatures, or, as in this case, a tragic implosion. What's astonishing is that the U.S. Navy detected this implosion just a few hours after the Titan submersible began its dive to a depth of 12,500 feet into the ocean. Although the Navy initially hesitated to disclose this finding to the public, stating they couldn't definitively confirm the sound's accuracy, an implosion at such depths would produce a deafening and forceful noise that would resonate throughout the ocean. The pressure at such depths is incredibly high, and the implosion would have occurred almost instantly, generating a shockwave that would travel through the water at astonishing speeds. Despite the fact that the submersible would have been destroyed in a matter of seconds, the sound of the implosion would have been unmistakable to the skilled ears of the U.S. Navy. To verify that the sound was indeed an implosion, the Navy likely relied on their advanced acoustic monitoring equipment, which is capable of detecting even the faintest sounds in the ocean. To put the magnitude of this sound into perspective, the pressure beneath the ocean is unimaginably intense, with each 33 feet of depth adding another atmosphere of pressure. At a depth of 12,500 feet, the pressure would reach an astounding 5,400 pounds per square inch. Hence, it's evident that the pressure is so immense that even the sturdiest equipment can fail while the human body would be instantly crushed without the protection of a deep-sea submersible. 
The fact that the implosion was audible at such depths serves as a testament to the sheer force and intensity of the event, serving as a reminder of the incredible and often perilous forces that lie beneath the waves. It emphasizes the importance of caution and meticulous planning when venturing into this uncharted realm. We now grasp the significance of the Titan submersible's implosion sound, but the story doesn't end there. Even though the U.S. Navy confirmed the implosion as the Titan submersible on June 20th, more than a day after the tragic incident, numerous other peculiar sounds were picked up by underwater sonar devices known as sonoboys, which were deployed in an effort to search for the lost submersible, which was initially believed to be still somewhere in the ocean. These sounds were described as bangs or knocks, raising hopes that the submersible and its crew might still be intact. However, the source of the banging noises remained a mystery for several weeks, until the recent rumors and speculations were finally dismissed. I want to mention that the sound was detected at 2 a.m. local time by a Canadian P-3 aircraft. An internal government memo, which CNN obtained, disclosed that these unusual banging noises occurred every 30 minutes and were heard again four hours after the first instance. For context, the U.S. Coast Guard initially thought the noises might be SOS signals from the people inside the sub, giving hope that they were still alive and waiting for rescue. Now, here's a question for you to answer. Do you believe that the banging noises truly came from the Titan submersible in any way? Perhaps from the wreckage? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you'd like to show support and solidarity for the bereaved families and all those involved in this tragic incident, please consider leaving a blue heart in the comments. In any case, considering everything, we should also understand why the U.S. Navy initially kept the implosion sounds a secret. It's important to note that the U.S. Navy primarily focuses on military capabilities to address foreign threats, while the U.S. Coast Guard is typically responsible for search and rescue missions and other security-related tasks. However, because of their shared maritime objectives, the two services often collaborate, as they did during the efforts to locate the Titan. Exactly, there is no truth to any conspiracy theory regarding the secrecy of the U.S. Navy's findings. The reason behind keeping the information private was actually thoughtful and logical. In straightforward terms, the U.S. Navy withheld the detected noises from the public to ensure that search and rescue operations could continue without interruption. They couldn't be certain at that time if the sounds were indeed from an implosion, and announcing it prematurely might have halted ongoing efforts to find the submersible. So their decision was aimed at maintaining the momentum of the search and rescue operations. Absolutely, you are correct. Even if the U.S. Navy was certain about the implosion sounds, their decision to keep it a secret aligns with standard protocol for maritime emergencies. In such situations, when a distress signal is received, the primary focus is on initiating search and rescue operations to locate and aid any potential survivors. In the case of the missing submersible, both the U.S. Navy and U.S. Coast Guard were collaborating to find the vessel and its crew. By keeping the implosion sounds confidential, the Navy could proceed with their investigation without interrupting the ongoing search and rescue efforts. This approach ensured that the priority remained on the potential survival and safety of the crew. You are absolutely right, and it's important to highlight that the U.S. Navy's decision to keep the implosion sounds confidential was not uncommon. Military organizations often follow this practice of keeping information about ongoing operations and investigations under wraps, especially when national security or the safety of military personnel is involved. In this particular situation, the Navy's top priority was to locate the missing submersible and its crew. By keeping their findings private until they had a clearer understanding of the situation, they could focus on the search and rescue efforts without any unnecessary disruptions. It allowed them to work diligently to find the sub and its crew while ensuring the safety and success of the operation remained paramount. The Tragic Timeline As of now, the investigation into the tragic incident has uncovered several new findings, shedding light on the events leading up to the Titan implosion including recent discoveries of wreckage and questionable actions by OceanGate following the incident. 
Let's take you through the coherent timeline, starting from the very beginning of this unfortunate event. In June 2023, a courageous group of adventurous explorers embarked on a daring expedition to the wreck of the Titanic, using the MV Polar Prince vessel for their journey. The crew consisted of seasoned adventurers, including British businessman and expedition financier Hamish Harding, Pakistani investor Shahzada Dawood, his 19-year-old son Suleiman, renowned French diver Paul Henry Narjola, and Ocean Gate's CEO Stockton Rush. As they sailed toward the dive site, which was approximately 375 nautical miles off the coast of Newfoundland, the crew was filled with excitement, eager to uncover secrets from the renowned shipwreck lying 12,500 feet beneath the waves. It's worth noting that the voyage was originally scheduled for May, but had to be postponed due to severe winter conditions, the worst experienced in Newfoundland in four decades. Despite the challenges, the crew persevered and reached the wreck site on June 17th, well aware that their window for attempting the dive was narrow for that year. Despite the challenges, the following morning, the crew began the final preparations for their groundbreaking mission. At around 4 a.m. on June 18th, the submarine Titan, carrying the pilot and four passengers in its cramped interior, left the Polar Prince on the ocean's surface and began its descent into the dark depths of the North Atlantic. Initially, everything went as planned. The Titan regularly communicated with the Polar Prince every 15 minutes using short digital messages, ensuring that its progress was closely monitored and any anomalies would be swiftly addressed. This communication system was just one of several safety measures put in place to ensure the passenger's security and the success of the mission. Before the tragic incident, there were worrying concerns about the vessel's safety. David Lockridge, a former OceanGate director of marine operations, was fired in 2018 for reportedly pointing out flaws in the carbon fiber hull and other alleged problems. Furthermore, industry leaders had sent warnings to OceanGate about potential catastrophic risks associated with the submarine's development. Nevertheless, the company maintained its unwavering confidence. Around two hours into the dive, communication suddenly stopped. Despite multiple attempts to contact the Titan, there was only silence in response. With only 96 hours of onboard oxygen remaining for the crew, an international coalition of rescue forces rapidly mobilized into action. However, they faced significant challenges due to the remote location and difficult conditions. Astonishingly, the crew up above lost contact with the Titan, but it took nearly eight hours before the Polar Prince informed the authorities, wasting precious time in the critical search for survivors. Aircraft from the U.S. and Canadian forces started searching from the air, while U.S. and Canadian Navy ships began a desperate sonar search of the lifeless ocean floor. Unfortunately, the absence of a recovery system or emergency beacon aboard the experimental titanium and carbon fiber submersible hindered their urgent efforts. By June 20th, concerns escalated that the questionable hull integrity of the submersible had indeed failed. For some, this outcome was not surprising, given the prior warnings. In response to the situation, the U.S. Navy took on a more significant role and deployed its flyaway deep ocean salvage system, also known as FADOS, to assist in locating the submersible. FADOS is specially designed to recover large heavy objects from extreme depths of up to 19,075 feet. It operates as a modular system that can be swiftly deployed on ships to lift objects weighing up to 60,000 pounds. The U.S. Navy worked in coordination with the U.S. Coast Guard, which was leading the search and rescue operation, to enhance their efforts in locating the missing submersible and its crew. The Coast Guard cutter USEGC Sycamore was dispatched to the search area to offer assistance. It's important to mention that the Navy possesses other deep-sea capabilities that could potentially have been utilized, including the Submarine Rescue Diving Recompression System, SRDRS, and the cable-controlled undersea recovery vehicle 21, Curve 21, which is a remotely operated underwater vehicle. However, given the estimated depth of 12,500 feet where the Titan submersible was located, SRDRS would likely not have been able to reach it. Curve 21, rated at 20,000 feet, could have been more suitable for locating and recovering the Titan. As expected, 
Questions did arise about why the Navy's assets were not deployed sooner after the submersible's disappearance. Nevertheless, we've previously discussed how the Navy was already quite certain about what had happened, which influenced their decision-making process. They had to conduct thorough investigations to ensure the accuracy of their assumptions. As each day passed, more ships and robotic submersibles arrived, systematically scouring the icy seafloor for clues. However, time was running out as the oxygen reserves in the submersible approached depletion. Finally, on June 22nd, a remotely operated vehicle from the offshore vessel Horizon Arctic discovered debris from the mangled front section of the Titan's pressure hull, scattered 1,600 feet from the Titanic wreckage. The catastrophic implosion was officially confirmed, and sadly, all five crew members had lost their lives due to the immense pressure at such extreme depths. In the following days, on June 28th, the Coast Guard reported that debris and human remains from the Titan had been recovered and brought back to land, marking an early phase of the investigation. Authorities stated that the debris would be taken to a U.S. port for further analysis, which is still pending. The Pressure of Deep Sea Exploration Despite the lack of due diligence at Ocean Gate, it is crucial to acknowledge the immense difficulty of deep sea exploration. Regardless of whether precautions are taken or not, the challenges of exploring the depths of the ocean are awe-inspiring. Just like aviation and space exploration, where breaking free of gravity and flying through the air are considered remarkable feats. Absolutely, deep sea exploration presents far greater engineering challenges compared to aviation and space exploration. It is a daunting and often overlooked task that comes with numerous difficulties. Unlike aviation and space, where the environment is relatively predictable and manageable, the deep sea is an extremely hostile and challenging environment for both humans and machines. As we've previously discussed, the pressure in the deep sea is unimaginably high. At depths of over 1,000 meters below the ocean surface, the pressure can be more than 100 times greater than at sea level. Such immense pressure can easily crush most man-made submersibles, making it essential to engineer vehicles with pressure hulls strong enough to withstand these extreme conditions. Deep-sea crafts require highly specialized engineering to ensure their survival in this hostile realm. It's worth noting once more that the absence of natural light makes navigation and communication with the surface team much more challenging. The deepest parts of the ocean are completely dark, causing visibility to be extremely poor. This necessitates the use of sonar systems and artificial lighting to avoid obstacles and study the seafloor and marine life. Additionally, water temperature can fluctuate significantly based on depth and location. While surface waters may be warm and tropical, the deep sea can have freezing temperatures just above zero degrees Celsius. The frigid conditions in this environment require submersibles and their crews to have specialized heating systems and insulation. The corrosive nature of salt water can rapidly degrade equipment that isn't adequately protected, leading to shorter lifespans for operational tools. Moreover, the high salinity and conductivity of seawater can cause corrosion and short circuits if electrical systems and metal components aren't adequately insulated and sealed. You might be wondering whether the U.S. Navy also contributes to deep sea exploration. The answer is yes. The Navy has a long history of supporting deep-sea research and developing technologies to access the ocean depths. Their work has been essential in advancing our scientific knowledge of the deep-sea environment and supporting Navy operations. One remarkable instance of the Navy's contributions is the Trieste Bathyscaphy, an innovative deep-diving research vessel. In 1960, the Trieste accomplished an extraordinary feat by reaching the deepest known point in the world's oceans, descending over 10,900 meters to the bottom of the Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench. This historic dive set a world record for the deepest submarine voyage, a record that remained unbroken for more than 50 years. Developed by the Navy's Bathyscaphe Trieste Corporation in collaboration with the French Navy, the Trieste aimed to demonstrate the capability of manned exploration in the deep ocean. Its success demonstrated that it was feasible to send humans to the deepest parts of the sea using specially engineered vehicles. Beyond manned exploration, 
The Navy has been at the forefront of developing unmanned underwater vehicles, UUVs, for deep sea research as well. Advanced UUVs like the Remus 6000 can dive more than 6,000 meters below the surface to study and map the seafloor. These UUVs are equipped with sonars, cameras, and other sensors, enhancing remote sensing capabilities in the harsh ocean environments. The Naval Research Laboratory has also developed specialized sensors and instruments for studying the ocean, including probes capable of measuring pressure, temperature, salinity, and other data even in extreme depths. These technologies have played a crucial role in investigating the Titan submersible incident. Many of the oceanographic sensors and instruments used on deep-sea diving Navy submarines have also been employed on scientific research vessels, providing valuable insights into the deep sea. The Navy's cutting-edge technology and experience in operating at great depths have been essential for advancing deep-sea exploration. While defense and scientific research have distinct objectives, the Navy's technological contributions have been critical in pushing the boundaries of human capabilities in the vast depths of the world's oceans. Aftermath The tragic sinking of the Titan submersible in June 2023 underscored the significant costs and risks associated with private deep-sea exploration. After the vessel imploded due to intense pressure, resulting in the tragic loss of all five crew members on board, the U.S. Coast Guard launched extensive search and rescue efforts, which turned out to be a multi-million dollar expense for taxpayers. An analysis by defense budget expert Mark Kanzian, published in the Washington Post, revealed that Coast Guard operations alone incurred an estimated cost of $1.2 million, not including the additional expenses for debris recovery. The significant use of public resources to aid a private company's expedition raises essential questions about accountability. While such efforts were undoubtedly necessary in an attempt to save lives, it does bring up the question of whether taxpayers should be responsible for funding dangerous and privately funded adventures. Perhaps this incident calls for a re-evaluation of regulation and oversight of commercial deep-sea exploration to ensure proper accountability and the responsible allocation of public resources. Furthermore, just weeks after the disaster in July 2023, OceanGate announced the suspension of all operations. The negative impact on the company's reputation and the scrutiny following the Titan incident clearly affected its future viability. The considerable costs and risks associated with private underwater missions, such as that of the Titan submersible, may necessitate the implementation of improved safety protocols and restrictions, before allowing travel to such deadly depths in the future. In the aftermath of this tragic event, the least we can do is show our support for all the relatives and individuals affected by leaving a blue heart in the comments. If you found this video informative and enjoyable, please consider supporting our channel by liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. Your involvement enables us to continue producing high-quality content about the U.S. Navy and other maritime incidents. We rely on dedicated viewers like you to help us grow and continue presenting captivating stories about the sea. We look forward to having you join us in our next video. Thank you.